how are ya? Welcome back to the channel. I'm getting ready for the day currently and I was realizing that I haven't done a just regular Q&A solo, just me and you, yet this year. And we're already like almost in Q2, which is like wild how fast the year is flying by. So I thought that could be that could be just kind of a fun little way to connect and a lot has obviously changed. I mean, not that much, mostly just getting married, but it's been a while. So I feel like we are we are due for one. Uh, quite a few people also asked for updated makeup routine. So I figured two birds, one stone, I'll just get ready while I talk to you guys. My makeup routine is equally very consistent and changes day to day depending on what I have planned. But some things are always the same, like sunscreen. Um, okay, so I screenshotted these from Instagram. Y'all really came through and submitted a ton. These are in no particular order, no particular topic. Some of them are easy, some of them are a little bit more in depth, but um, the first one that I screenshotted is easy. <laughs> are you changing your last name? And I've talked about this before, but the short answer is legally no, not yet, maybe not ever. I'll see how I feel once I have kids, if I like legally want us all to have the same name, but um, I'm okay with being socially known as Mikkel Cersei amongst like our friends here, and then being known as Mikkel Jancy amongst like work things and on the internet. And also I have gone through the name change process twice <laughs> and it is just so annoying. It's so annoying. So I don't want to do it again anytime soon. Um, now I have even more things under under my name, obviously like a house title deed. I still don't know the difference between a title and a deed. Are they the same thing? I don't know. My LLC, I'm working on a trust, actually two trusts all under Jancy and just changing my name. I would have to change all those things. And it's just not something I wanna put on my plate right now if I don't have to. So no. A lot of people ask to do a close up detail about your wedding ring set. I still haven't decided if I like wearing my wedding band with my engagement ring. I've been some days wearing it on this finger with another little band that I never get to wear because my aura ring also only fits on this finger. But here they are together. Um, so in case you missed it, we picked out these vintage rings in Paris and the Paris vlogs. Mine is from the 60s, Jordy's is from I think the 40s, and then this is obviously my engagement ring. I think I like my engagement ring by itself the most, and when I was actually in Paris, a lot of local Parisians, not a lot, but a few DM'd me and said, oh, it's actually kind of the norm here to wear your wedding band on a different finger. So I was like, that's kind of cool. Next question, do you miss Texas? Of course. Course. There's so many things I miss about Texas. I do miss living right on the water. That was so fun. I miss the food scene in Texas. And then obviously I miss being so close to my family. The things I don't miss is I did not realize like how much your quality of life does improve when it's nice outside every day. Just like being able to go sit outside and get fresh air and not be either freezing cold or sweating hot. So there's things that I really miss about Texas and there's some things that I'm like, oh, I was dealing with that. <laughs> Are you still in therapy? Are there things to unpack moving from an unhealthy relationship to a healthy one? Oh yes. I still have so much work to do in therapy. Um, I, I've mentioned and shared this a bit in the vlogs, but I have recently started trying a new type of therapy called brain spotting. It's very similar to EMDR. It's a little more focused. It's something that they discovered when having people go through EMDR, EMDR, I, movement. My therapist has me look in a certain spot and like asks me questions and it's very very interesting because I am the type of person that is much more connected to my body than I am my feelings and so it's interesting to kind of almost manipulate your body to feel feelings and maybe discover things that you haven't felt before. We've only done a couple sessions like that and it's interesting most of the time we end up actually talking about my relationship with work and that tends to be the thing that affects my day-to-day -day health the most. But yes, there's always things of course from my past, things that I don't realize have affected my image of myself. Um, a lot of times that actually comes up a lot in me and Jordy's conversations um, and then I will talk about it in therapy where Jordy will be like, I think that you think that you're not valued in this way because you were led to believe that you're not valued in this way, but you are valued in this way. Things like that come up a lot when Jordy and I are yeah, living life together. Any solo trips planned? So I'm actually currently waiting to find out I might have to, or I might get to go 
on a trip for a brand trip, my first ever brand trip. So I'm waiting to see if that works out. And if that's the case, I'm gonna take a solo trip before because we were already gonna be in Nashville. And then I was gonna obviously fly home from Nashville, but the New York trip would be a few days after Nashville. So instead of going East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, I was like, maybe I'll just stay out for a couple more days to not have to do that flight again and do a little solo trip somewhere over there. So I am waiting to see if that happens because if so, I'm gonna take like just a little two, maybe three, maybe two night solo trip um, and of course vlog it. So we'll see. Does seeing your friends having kids make you want to have kids any sooner? This is a question I get every single time I do a q and is not this, but when do you want kids? Has your timeline changed, et cetera, et cetera. I've always said literally since I was a teenager that I wanted to start trying for kids when I hit 30-ish. And I honestly still feel the same way. I mean, that could always change. I could, you know, wake up in six months and be like, I'm ready. But as of right now, I still feel like 30 feels right. My parents had us in their 30s. I think my mom was 34 and 37 when she had me and my sister, but she did try for a very long time. We were IVF. I thought it was cool to have parents that were like already established in their career and they got to like live a lot of life before they had kids. And I think that there's definitely benefits to having kids younger versus later. Pros and cons, no matter when you have kids, but I just kind of always pictured myself doing the same thing. And I still do picture myself doing the same thing. I am about to be 27 in a few days and I feel like three-ish years of being newlyweds, newly married, focusing on that and then also really really continuing to focus on my career before having kids feels right. Also I did this on accident the other day of just doing my um, brow gel before filling them in because I thought I was going to be doing like a no makeup makeup day just like brow gel concealer calling it good but then our plans changed so then i went back and i did more makeup and i actually love the way that my brows filled after the gel had like set and dried and then i filled them in so now i've been doing it on purpose as a multiple chronic illness girly as well do you have any tips on handling flares I'm still figuring it out myself. Yesterday, I actually had a very bad flare day. You can still see I've been having it show up on my neck, which has been so weird. Something that Jordy has helped me kind of figure out is budgeting a sick day every week, no matter what, has been kind of nice because otherwise I can just keep pushing myself and pushing myself and kind of almost pushing off a flare if I'm like running off adrenaline and doing so much. But if I give myself one day, which a lot of the times it's been Sundays where I sleep in, I'm like super chill all day, pretty much in pajamas until we go to night church. I don't know if there's any science behind that, but I've been basically forcing myself to super, super, super chill out for one day a week. And I do feel like that's kind of helped my body not just like accumulate fatigue and then have like a really bad few days of a flare. Also, this wasn't a question anybody asked, um, but I, I think it could be interesting to talk about in terms of kids and now being married and also autoimmune. I have been on birth control since I was 21. I tried briefly getting off of it and then I freaked myself out and I was like, these are a lot of hormonal changes and I got back on it. But I am interested to see I've heard a lot of mixed things about like if progesterone can help, you know, lessen lupus symptoms or I don't know, just, you know, hormones affect so much. I'm actually planning on trying to get off of birth control at the end of this month um, after life slows down in case it really wrecks me and seeing if that helps my symptoms at all as well. This is purely experimental. I'm not trying to get pregnant. I think I would use my ring to track to make sure I don't get pregnant. But yes, I feel like life has slowed down to a point or will at least starting in April to where I can like kind of start experimenting with my health again and seeing if I improve or not. What are your priorities for yourself and your relationship in your first year of marriage? Honestly, the word that keeps coming to mind is just like rooted, being rooted, being grounded, really investing in our community here, really taking time to connect just the two of us, date nights as often as we can when he's not on the road and especially in this season before we have kids, just like really investing in the relationships around us and between us is by far the biggest priority to me. Um, more than anything career related, more than anything like future thinking, involving ourselves in our church more, volunteering more, doing things together more. Um, after being long distance as well, I think that it's really a sweet transition to now be married and living together and figuring out like that rhythm of life. Why didn't you buy a house in Texas? <laughs> um, I actually tried <laughs> several times. I was thinking back this morning, I was like, did I try to put in offers on 
two houses or three because there was a third that I was on the fence about and I just can't remember. I definitely like countered back and forth on one house in Texas and they all just ended up falling through. There was one house that I loved. I don't even think I told y'all this. The street it was on was on East 12th Street and if y'all know 12 is my favorite number and I was like it's a sign it's meant to be mine. It had a little guest house in the back tiny tiny. I was so set on this house and I gave a great offer and it fell through and I was like devastated at the time but honestly, if I had owned a house in Texas, I don't know what I would have done <laughs> continuing to date Jordy and then us eventually getting engaged. It would have just been, you know, one more thing to figure out. So I'm glad that it fell through, but uh, I did try. I did try to buy a house in Texas. Most meaningful part of your wedding day. Super meaningful was having our own vows written. I also loved doing a first look and then sneaking away and having our own dinner was really special as well. So I liked that. Uh, we did that during the cocktail hour. We had our own private little dinner and a chance to connect and be like, oh my gosh, we're married. And also to sign our papers. So those were all special. Sorry, I'm focusing on this brow. Is there a reason you avoid talking about God on your channel? I don't avoid it, but I want to be super mindful of everybody that's here and that watches this channel. I don't want people to feel like you have to be a Christian to be here um, or to make them uncomfortable in any way, shape or form. I have a lot of friends. This is actually another question is, are all of your friends Christian? The answer is no. I have a lot of friends that have very different beliefs than me. Some of our best friends out here are atheist and I just care about like, loving them and being their friend a lot more than I care about like pushing my beliefs on them, if that makes sense. And that's just kind of how I live my life is um, I love God and he's a big part of my life and church and Christianity and all that is like a part of my rhythm and my routine. But me just being there for people in my life and loving them despite what they believe is one of the most important things I can do. How are you doing finances with Jordy? Are you sharing a bank account? Yes, so we've officially merged our finances, kind of. So we have a personal joint account, checking, saving, whatever, but then I have my business account, he has his business account. I run all of my business finances, he runs all of his business finances. We're on payroll to ourselves. So I know that on the 22nd of every month, I have payroll from myself to myself that hits and it's this dollar amount. And for him, the first of every month, he has payroll from himself to himself of a specific dollar amount that hits every month to our joint account. And that's what we live off of. Do you think you will use unique or traditional names for your kids? So the name that I love for a girl, and we'll see if I still like it once I'm actually there, um, is the first name is like a little traditional. It's not like, Madeline or anything like super common or traditional like that. But the middle name is super funky, quirky, cutesy, weird. But if I am pregnant with a boy, there will be no surprise to the internet what the name will be. Because if you don't know this, Jordy is George Truett Cersei the third. And so we feel like there's already three. We can't, we can't be the ones to break this. So if we have a boy, it would be George the fourth. How regal does that sound? But I would call him Truett. A lot of people ask, have you and Jordy thought about getting Max a buddy, Max a sibling, just another dog? And honestly, Max doesn't love other dogs. Max is a people person. But when a dog comes over, he'll like kind of like sniff and play for like a minute and then he's like, I'm over it. And we'll just go find his own room to like lay down it and get some space. He's like very antisocial with dogs. Plus, honestly, like, I don't know if my heart can handle another dog. I am such a helicopter mom with Max. I get so freaked out thinking about like, what if he escapes? What if, like, I think if I had two dogs, I would just be so anxious about anything happening to either of them. <laughs> so um, one dog is good for me. How did you find your financial advisor and your CPA? Um, CPA, I found word of mouth. I just asked other self-employed friends, hey, do you have a good CPA that you like working with? Because when you're self-employed, your taxes are crazy. I think one year I had like 86 W-9s or 1099s. You get the W-9. I had like 86 W-9s. My taxes are just a mess. Financial advisor, I actually found through, I did Financial Peace University way back in maybe like 2018. Um, which I know Dave Ramsey, kind of controversial. I don't agree with everything he stands for, but he has this, this program, this something on his on his website called Smart Vester, I think. And you can go on and basically like get connected with financial advisors in your area that I don't know if they're all Christian. The one I ended up working with is like a Christian group. Um, they're called Thrivent. 
and that's how I connected with him. I thought this was funny. Um, what did you miss by not taking time between relationships? Not judging, just single, it cuts off, but I think she said something along the lines of, I just went from one long-term relationship to another, as did I. I only really had five months between moving to Texas and meeting Jordy, which was not a lot of time. Honestly, I've talked to Jordy about this. I feel like the thing that I missed out on the most is like the dating stories. Part of me does think like it would be probably very stressful and dramatic, but also really fun to just like go on first dates as a 20 something year old. Cause I hadn't done that since I was a teenager. And it's just very different to see what happens and then come home with a story of like, oh my gosh, this guy was the weirdest ever. He asked me on the first date, blah, 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 blah. You know, just stories like that, um, I think is something that I missed out on. How can you afford to host so often? I also had people ask like, would you ever want to do event planning? I think I got a lot of questions like that because I posted it the same day that I posted all the Instagram stories of hosting the baby shower for my friend. Um, I love hosting, love, love, love. And I love planning and I love thinking through all the details. I don't think I'd want to do it as a job because I would feel high pressure stress of wanting to make sure it was perfect and then also working within someone's budget and like, I don't like spending other people's money for them. That just kind of stresses me out. But I love doing it as like a gift to someone. In terms of being able to afford it, Jordi and I actually have a line item on our household budget for hosting. And it's one of our larger line items. So we do that, we like prioritize that over other things um, because it actually is so fun. It's a way to hang out with a lot of people at once and it's a way to like gift an experience to other people, even if it's just us like casually having friends over and us like buying the pizza. It's like we got to feed our friends and then we got to hang out with everybody at once. How cool is that? When I was in Maui with Jordy, we were invited over to the Beth Key's house. I don't know if you know Jeff Beth Key. Um, he wrote To Hell With The Hustle, which is such a good book. I was very inspired by the way that they live their lives. They have like this beautiful house, but they use it for other people so often. They host everything there. They like had us and like 30 people over for dinner, made everybody burgers. Um, but they're also like very career driven and very family driven. They own several businesses. They like work very hard, but they spend a lot of time with their kids. I don't know how they do it all, but I was really inspired by them being like, we work really hard and we have this beautiful home so that we can treat other people to these really great experiences and like bring community together. And after seeing that, I was like, that I feel like is so fulfilling and I wanna work towards that one day. I'm working towards that. I wanna be that type of person for the people in our community and the people around us. I need help finding big hip friendly pants. Honestly, I mean, there's a lot of brands that do great curve these days, but my very, very favorite is Abercrombie's Curve Love. I think that they're two inches of extra space around the hips that they give per the waist size. So those have been my go-to. Everlane does some really good, Madewell does some really good, but I actually think that Abercrombie is the most consistent and they have the most variety of different types. Okay, intrigued by your guest slash mom and dad's house. Will you make it over, share it, or is it private? This is something I haven't really talked about yet because I can't share a ton. We're going through a ton of changes with it. I'll explain more when we get there. It's been a big old process. I don't know if you watch the vlogs and have noticed contractors over here a ton, but we are, uh, do I even want to say this right now? I'll explain a lot more details down the road, but we are, essentially working on the process of building a whole new structure. It will be twice the size. It will have a separate bedroom, separate bathroom, separate kitchen, separate den. It'll be a fun process to take y'all through, you know, literally building something from scratch. Um, we're currently in the phase of like drawing plans with an architect and all that sort of stuff. I don't think I can say anything else about it right now. I'll talk about it more at a later time. Whose vlogs do you like to watch? Um, I need to get back into my YouTube watching era. I've always watched Aspen Ovard, love her. I love Gretchen Garrity. My friend Michelle just came back to YouTube. I'm excited to watch her birth vlog. She just posted it, Michelle Reed. Welcome back, Michelle. Oh, I like watching Lauren Elizabeth's vlogs a lot. Yeah, I need to get back into my watching era now that life is slowing down. Okay, I wanted to answer this one because I feel like it's a little bit of a misconception. Why did you decide to do your wedding at your house? What happened to the Airbnb you rented? Uh, we rented an Airbnb for the rehearsal dinner, and that is where we had the rehearsal dinner. At first, I was gonna stay there just to get out of the house chaos, but later I decided I would be more stressed having to like pack up stuff to stay somewhere else. 
but we always planned to have the after party at our house. I just didn't say that on the internet because I didn't want people to try to figure out where I lived and like crash the wedding. How's Max's allergies? Honestly, since being back in California, so much better. Like almost gone. I don't see him licking his paws anymore. He still has a little bit of like leftover discoloration. Um, but he has felt so much healthier and happier being here in California. And he actually wants to like go outside and walk. And in Texas, I don't know if it was the heat or the allergies or what, but he would like fight walks. He did not want to go on them. And I was like, dude, you gotta get movement in. But here he's like sh actually like happy to be outside. Okay, two more. More Fairhope videos coming soon. Yes, if you don't know, Jordy's parents live in Fairhope. So of course we're gonna go visit them as much as we can. If you wanna stay at their house, <laughs> they have two Airbnb rooms at their house and it's so beautiful cause it's right on the bay. It's like such a perfect little, such a cute town. I'll link their Airbnb if you wanna go stay with my in-laws. <laughs> and then what is happening with culinary school? That is starting in April. I'm doing first a 12 week program and then a 10 week program. So all in all, it's gonna be a 22 week program. It's only going to be one day a week. So that's starting soon in just a few weeks. Um, I'm getting a lot of travel out of the way in March. And then I think I'll be around a lot more starting in April so that I don't miss culinary school. So excited to start that soon. Okay, my makeup's done and I've been talking for way too long and I got through a lot of questions, but thank y'all for submitting. That was the most questions I think I've ever had submitted, like a couple thousand, which is crazy. So thank you. Um, I love y'all. I love just getting a chance to like sit down and casually catch up and chat and talk about life and talk about things and get ready because it's two birds, one stone. Now I'm ready for the day, which is awesome. I'm excited for some upcoming vlogs very soon. We're going to Texas, then it's my birthday, then we're going to Nashville, then maybe a solo trip, then maybe New York. We'll see. Um, and then, and then I'll be home for a lot of vlogs. So I love you. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon.